would have to ask you, do you want to do the God thing again, or do you want to just do the conversation? Which I like. Seemed like most of the same we did like half the time. We did, didn't we? <laughs> um, all right, let's get started. Okay. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is Coffee with Jesus. We don't have coffee, but you well, had your. I don't drink coffee anyway, so. <laughs> We're just going to talk about yeah. God and mm -hmm. last conversation we had, we had, we talked about half and half about just the community and our lives and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a conversation show. And, and as far as coffee with Jesus, it's just particularly for people who don't want to hear it. They just know by the title name and sorry about the last time we were, I did not press record. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, this time I did. Okay. Double checked it too. <laughs> Do you want to go check it? Nah. I'm <laughs> okay. So I'm, I guess, the host, Jeremy Shines. Mm -hmm. And today, again, we're here with Wilbur Becker. Yep. Let's get started. Okay. Hi, Will. Howdy. We just came from um, men's Bible study. Men's Bible study at our church. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. was, that, was, that was interesting. It is. Uh, I really enjoy that subject. Uh, the whole. Creation versus evolution, you know, origin of the earth, that kind of stuff. I really, I can't get enough of that kind of study, mm -hmm. honestly. So. What did you get today? Oh, today. Well, of course, today it was uh, um, Dr. Steve Austin, who's a geologist, talking about uh, rock layers and fossils at uh, Grand Canyon. And uh, specifically, they were at Grand Canyon, but they were, you know, that stuff is spread throughout the country um, just in layers. And it's, it's, it's just amazing to me when, when I study that stuff to see um, how God laid everything out for us to show us his power, to show us the past, to confirm um, his word, the Bible. The whole, the whole concept is, is Genesis history, and people are having um, doubts about whether the book of Genesis is actual history or if it's, um, you know, just... An allegory. Fa allegory, you know, fables, things to make a point, um, but aren't, you know, actual history. But, um, you know, us at our church and me personally, I believe that uh, every aspect of the, the Bible, um, as when it comes to the book of Genesis and the uh, books after, um, which make up the, the Pentateuch, right? The first five books, the ones that Moses wrote about the whole Exodus journey and everything that they're actual history, actual historical events, the whole uh, process of creation, uh, you know, the six days uh, that God took to make everything were six literal 24-hour days as opposed, and then, you know, he rested on the seventh day, <clears throat> as opposed to, you know, eons and, and millions of years and stuff like that. And, and to me, um, everything that we see and everything that they point out, and that's a lot of what the series we watched this morning was about, is just proving, hey you know, a lot of this stuff, and of course they focused on Noah's flood, explains what um, evolutionary scientists explain as, you know, a process of millions and millions of years actually happened during the flood in the matter of, you know, days or weeks. And it's, it's just a fascinating um, uh, a study for me, yeah. It's mm -hmm. interesting because, like, I liked how he said... Um, that it's a monument, mm -hmm. right? We have the biblical text and then we have the actual text all right. around us, you know, yeah. and how he linked those things together. And for me, it, it makes me think of two plus two equals four. Like God mm -hmm. gave us reasoning to make sense of things. Exactly. To, to, that they may equal something that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you think of, of us as humans, he gave us, um, he made us special, he made us unique different than all the animals because we have reasoning we have choice we have you know um the ability to appreciate uh things like art you know stuff like that and i think that's part of um where we talk about we were made in his image the animals were not they don't appreciate that kind of stuff they don't make those kind of reasonings mm -hmm. or the, the that kind of logic where they live they live by instinct mm -hmm. you know right um but we, we have logic, we have, you know, art, and uh, we have, you know, just all these uh, different things which separates us, um, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And I guess what would be the differences between God and man, though? We are made in his image, but what are those differences? Well, I mean, God is the all-powerful, right? He's the one that created everything, and we are part of his creation. Uh, we're made in his image in that we have certain attributes um, of him that he gave us, the ability to reason, the ability to choose, and things like that. But then, uh, whereas God is perfect and sinless, we made the choice and we sinned against God, our creator. Um, and so now we, as a human race, are, are tainted and uh, that created this separation between us and God. Some people would argue, um, I didn't, I didn't ask to be created. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'm sorry. That's I, a difficult it's, one. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's. It's. That's. You know, that's a deep topic. Uh, didn't ask to be created. You know, none of us asked to be created. Um, oh. You know, but everybody was created for a purpose, for a reason. There's something unique about each person that God had for them. And, you know, people talk about, well, you know, well, then how come I feel this way when the Bible says it's wrong? Or how come I have this deficiency? Mm -hmm. um, you know, does God want, want me to be like that? And it's like, no, no, he doesn't. And that's part of where, you know, where we messed up and we have that sin nature and there were consequences for that. And... The world itself, um, all of nature started breaking down and there started being flaws introduced and this, that, or the other. And it's a result of our actions and not what God wants. God allows it to happen. Yes, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, it's, it's a consequence of the actions of the human race. So you're saying there's two natures. Mm -hmm. There's a divine nature. That's God's nature, which mm -hmm. is holy and perfect. Yep. And then there's a corrupted, sinful nature which is rebellious and arrogant and prideful and all the evil that we see, not just in individuals, but in creation as well. Right. Because of the effects of what people choose to do against God's original design. Exactly. Yep. Take it away. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because, you, you know, there's people ask that question. If God is all powerful, why would he allow this to happen? You know, if he is so good, why would there be death and this and that or the other? And it's like, well, we kind of touched on this a little bit last time we talked. You know, God did not make robots. He, he created beings that had the ability to choose, the ability to choose to worship him or not, which creates a special kind of relationship um, that, you know, it's not autonomous. It's not, it actually has a meaning behind it. You know, if he just created us without the ability to sin without the ability to choose then that relationship um would be like a television set yeah i mean it, it, it's 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 meaningless in, in a way you know because there's i mean we're forced to we have no choice but when we have the choice to worship and believe that's just a whole new level but then of course some people choose not to and god allows that to happen yes um but that's where it gets into consequences because people take actions and there's consequences for actions. And unfortunately that affects other people. And then it just goes back to that whole choice. Thing. And it's a cycle, you know, it's just that whole cycle. Yeah. Right. And it just, you know. it's just downfalls from there. Sin. God is showing us in his Bible, in his word that these consequences are like snowballing, affecting and making making creation not just the creation of man of each of every one of us but the creation mm -hmm. it's affecting everything so like we're we're in today we're seeing a lot of terrible things happening in the world yeah it's unfortunate and yeah. we're seeing the effects of sin mm -hmm. right the effects of what god told us would happen if if we chose to rebel against if, if him if we chose to uh walk our own way mm -hmm. or to pretend or be our own god right no, yep. that's what I see, anyways. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, you can't help but see that, especially as a Christian. It's, you know, it's so sad, but it's, you know, but then that's how we learn too. Right. You know, that you know there are consequences. What are the consequences? And, um, you know, we can't just do it on our own either. That uh, if we want to be able to change things, if we want to be good people, 
then we need something else to help us along that path. And that's where you get God and the Holy Spirit. And I guess someone would talk about the conscious. My right is not your right and my wrong is not your wrong. How would you discern that? Well, I mean, so as a Christian, we have our foundation, which is the Bible, which is God's word. This is the account God left behind for us to learn from. It doesn't include everything. There's a lot of holes. There's a lot of, and I say holes, but there's just a lot of things that aren't explained. And I believe, honestly, that's because we don't need that exact detail. We don't need, you know, that level of, you know, this and this and this and that. You know, people, one question um, comes up, you know, it's like, well, who did Cain marry, right? Cain killed Abel, and then he went off to have a family. But it doesn't explain where his wife came from. And if there was only Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel, then where did Cain get his wife? And so there's this missing part where you just have to, you know, read the context of everything and say, well, obviously it was his sister. Um, <laughs> because, you know, if, if Adam and Eve were the only humans, then at first it was just siblings marrying siblings and then eventually marrying cousins. And then, you know, as it started branching out, then that's where you started um, to get the more uh, diversity and eventually, you know, many generations down the line is where you started to avoid that because the corruption in our own bodies made the, uh, the, um, the words eluding me, where you marry into family. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. I know what you're talking uh, about. Dang. Incest. Yeah. Incest, where incest was bad. Because of the corruption in our own bodies, and if you stayed within your own family, then that corruption would just expand, whereas if you went out, then you were able to mix and diverse and, and kind of avoid that a little bit. But in the beginning, Adam and Eve had close, close to perfect bodies. And a lot of those defects hadn't formed yet. Degenerated and over the time of, because of sin. Exactly, yep. Right. So back then it wasn't the issue that it is now. Because of more that disease, kind of because we've fallen further away from perfection. Exactly, yeah. I'm going to be, <laughs> I've noticed, so I'm going, to, I'm going to be the antagonist. I'm going to be the judge advocate for those of you who don't believe. Okay. For those of you who have all these questions. I, and, and Will is going to, I, I pray. Okay. And I know that I'll you have some answers. He's I ain't got perfect. I ain't got all the answers. <laughs> but I'll so do my I'm best. Gonna, I'm going to be the judge's advocate. Mm -hmm. I had a great question asked to me. And mm -hmm. here's the question. Okay. If God is perfect, and I think you answered it already, mm -hmm. but if God is perfect, how did a perfect God create sinful creatures? And see, here's the thing. God did not create sin. God created beings with a choice. And people could choose to follow God, and that's what God wants, and then that's where you get into the perfection. Or people can choose to go away from that. And so in essence, like sin is like the one thing God didn't create. He created the capability to sin, the capability to choose to not do what needed to be done. So that when that did happen, as part of a grander plan, because God, I mean, he knew everything was going to happen, but as part of a grander plan, that allowed us to get that new relationship where once we were lost and then we were saved. And now that's a whole new level of relationship, whereas the angels, you think about the angels, were created. And in a way, they had a choice, right? Because you had Satan and a third of the angels followed him um, and they made a choice to disobey God. But they don't have that option of redemption like we do, right? So, I mean, the angels, once again, it's it's a whole different situation between us and the angels where we have that option of redemption where the angels did not. So you have two-thirds of the angels that kept following God, one-third that fell away, and they're done for. We have a choice. Um, and uh, if I haven't made that point that I was going to make... I hope I did, but I think I got off track. I'm not sure. <laughs> that was a great, great answer. Um, really awesome. So someone would question, but God, 
God made a fruit that had sin in it, it had this defect in it. I, I don't necessarily believe the fruit itself caused the sin. I believe the decision to eat the fruit caused the sin. So then someone would say, didn't they have sin inside them because they chose wrong? The capability to. Capability to sin is not having sin itself. Once they chose to sin, then they had the sin within them. Mm. That's very interesting. That's very th theological. I'm just like... Whoa. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, you know, I'd... You know, I'm no great professor in any of this by by any means, but just over the years of listening to different messages, doing different Bible studies, of reading the Bible itself, these are just some of the conclusions that I came to through those studies and through um, what I believe is the Holy Spirit revealing truth to me through those. So, so a lot of people, I think, they don't believe because they don't have answers to their questions. Mm -hmm. And I believe if they get their answers, then that'll, that'll build some faith in them, right? So the question is... Maybe okay. there's other reasons, other mm -hmm. ways, not necessarily answering right. questions, but how do you know your God is the true God? What about, what about Hinduism? What about Buddhism? What about all the other religions? You know, you'd have to do a deep... Okay, so a couple things. So you talk about... Uh, first, you talk about people with questions. If they get their questions answered, that would build their faith. I would say yes and no to that. Um, I think people who don't want to believe and who will come up with questions, when some questions are answered, they'll just come up with more questions. Mm -hmm. And really, it's at some point, it's not about getting questions answered. It's about having faith. And it's not necessarily a blind faith, um, but there is some level of faith where you just have to trust in God. Now, to talk about the other religions. A lot of the other religions, um, you know, there's people out there that say all religions are the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you just get into, you know, different names for the God or, you know, this, that, or the other. And in some aspects, I will agree with that. In some aspects, with Christianity, true Christianity being the exception. Um, now, I haven't done uh, a, an in-depth study on a lot of the other religions, but you talk about a lot of them started out uh, by the teachings of a person who was a man to start and then was given God's status. Christianity teaches God had his status first and then became a man. So there's one thing that's different. Um, a lot of other religions are work-based, so you have to work to earn your way to uh, whatever version of heaven is, or um, if you go into uh, like multiple lives, into you know a better life on the next go around, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's you know different <laughs> things like that, but um, Christianity teaches that there's nothing we can do. All the works we do, we talked a little bit about this last time, but all the works we do is not in order to save us. We do it because we're saved, and um, it's just a natural outpouring of the Spirit that's within us. Um, so that's another thing that really Christianity is so different from all the other religions uh, in that you know everything else, there's something you have to do. You have to work at it, in order to become better, to make that next step, to reach the next level, whatever the case it is. It's not a video game. <laughs> you, know, you know, however it's described, but, uh, um, you know, Christianity is, it was all done for you, you've just got to accept and believe. And that's all you have to do. There's, no, there's nothing you can do because we are full of sin. The smallest thing creates this giant chasm between us and God, and that's where Jesus came and crossed that chasm for us and created a bridge, and then all we have to do is just step on it and believe. But there's a lot of other things too, but those are the main ones, yeah. Interesting. So, 
someone would say that maybe maybe this God is being very judgmental. Maybe he's like he's generalizing everybody, but he doesn't know me. What would you say to that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, how could Christianity you... be, seems very judgmental. I'm gonna leave you. Well, and that. that's where okay. So let's get into this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you need to get your knee pads. There's the, the no. There's the uh, very very misused phrase from the Bible that says, "Do not judge." Right? Judge yeah. not, lest you be judged. Mm-hmm. And people take that way out of context, and it's kind of referring to. There's the parable that was said uh, from Jesus, you know, well, it's not really a parable, it was more just a, an analogy, but um, if, how can you go to your brother and say, you know, you've got a, um, a, a sliver in your eye and try to remove that sliver when you have a log in your own eye? Um, that's kind of where he's getting and judging It's like, judge not lest you be judged, meaning if you judge somebody else, if you um, put somebody down for something, you have to realize that you're going to be held to the same standard. But when somebody says homosexuality is wrong, and it's a sin, that's not a judgment coming from me. That is something that was written in the Bible by God. In fact, um, you know, he uses harsh language in, in that particular instance. And that is something that, um, you know, there were a few things that were kind of retrofitted uh, when the New Testament came around. Um, you know, you think about some animals that were forbidden to be eaten were now able to eat. Um, I believe that was a vision given to Peter um, that he explained. Mm-hmm. Um but this, is, but this instance is not one of those things. There are certain things that are right and wrong. God laid them out. Um, some of them were... Because, I mean, there's books of, you know, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. But there were the basics. Ten commandments. Mm. These are the big ones, right? And... Um, and then it went into more detail about certain things. And... But then there was other things that was just beneficial for us, for our health. You think about some of the things we were told not to eat. Well, honestly, pigs. Overindulging in pig meat is is very unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's overindulging, mm-hmm. right? Um, moderation is okay. Mm-hmm. So that's one. Of, so that's one of those things where it was just it was better for us, and God was looking out for us. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, and then there's certain things, you know, cultural talk about, you know, differences between men and women and their roles and stuff like that. And that's comes from a cultural perspective and not necessarily, a you know, this is sin. Talk about, um, men in buildings took off your hats. Women had to have a head covering. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that was more of a cultural thing and not really a, that's a right or wrong sin or not sin thing, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like that. So, um. So, but then people, by our sin nature, blow things out of proportion on both sides, I feel. So you think that blowing things out of proportion is lacking the facts? I don't know about facts, probably lacking faith. Lacking faith? Yeah. Um, because, I mean, and there are people. I, you talk about Westboro Baptist Church. You heard of them? I'm sure you've heard of them. <clears throat> Their website is www.godhatesfags.com. Ooh. Very, I forget what state they're in, but it's the town is Westboro. It's Westboro Baptist Church. So much hate comes out of that church. Mm-hmm. And they're Baptists, and we're Baptists. Mm-hmm. And it's people like that, of course, they're the ones that make the news, right? Mm-hmm. Because they had all these protests, and they're saying all these hateful things. God hates fags, and you know, could never forgive, you know, someone who's a homosexual and stuff like that, and which is completely, completely off base and not true. And God doesn't hate anybody. God hates sin. I can love somebody. I have 
um, homosexuals in my family, and I love them. I don't agree with their lifestyle. I will call it out as sin. Mm -hmm. But I will still love them. I will meet with them, talk to them. They're family, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's... And, you know, if they want to talk about it, we usually don't, but if they wanted to talk about it, I would tell them what I believe. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't change the fact that they're still family and I still love them. Mm -hmm. So you can love someone even though you disagree with them. Absolutely. You can still treat them like a human being even though you you don't believe in what they believe or you don't dress or believe in what how they live their lives mm-hmm. or choose to do or choose to think you could still respect someone mutually and find understanding like let's agree to disagree mm-hmm. i'm still going to treat you like a human being yep absolutely right so here's here's uh interesting things my experience my experiences in life is and i've been that i've hated people who did who didn't agree with me you know and the thing about jesus for me is he's teaching me what you what you just said he's teaching me how to love people even though i disagree with them he's teaching me still to uh accept them still to want to be their friend even though i disagree with them but this sense of sinful nature is I can't love you. I can't accept you unless you agree with me 100% in everything that I believe and everything that I think or the way I live. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's the thing about um, this world is, is can we still respect each other? Can we still acknowledge each other Mm -hmm. that we, each other exists? I've, I've, I've had people, they see me, they know what I am. They know what I stand for, or whatever it is. And they see me and they go and they turn away. Mm-hmm. They like they reject me, in other words. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've done that. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not saying I'm perfect either. Right. That but it's sense. just like mm-hmm. what you just described. It's a, it's a horrible feeling, isn't it? Yeah. To be to be looked at as not being superior enough to this person or or measuring up enough or even just turned away and be like oh they you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean i don't have any extreme examples of, of situations i've been in with that but yeah that's that's i've i'm it make it reminds me of a person that i'm um i know now this person um is is a narcissist to an extreme i've never okay. really met i've met selfish people in other words narcissist is a very selfish person yeah. they all they think about is themselves and we all do that mm-hmm. to some degree oh yeah but there's some people who do it all the time mm-hmm. they live it and i don't know how to tell this person that they're being very selfish you know I'm not talking about you. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you wouldn't be here if I was talking about you. <laughs> right. So it was just it was just like all they thought about was themselves. And they have a family and then they have kids and I'm like like all they could think about is themselves. All they wanted to talk about was themselves. All they wanted to talk about was that me 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 and I was like okay, I'm bad. <laughs> but you're on another level, you know. Mm. And if I was talking or anyone else was talking, I've witnessed this. It was like, hurry up and shut up so I can talk, you know. Mm. Hurry up and be done with whatever because it's not it's not worthy enough. And and if any of us had ideas, it was just like, well, it wasn't my idea, so it was it's a terrible idea. And I'm just like, man, this this person really upset me, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah no that's tough i think if you're gonna if you have to deal with someone like that who's just and especially i think in a situation like that who's just not willing to listen to anything talking to them is almost pointless i think and that's where it has to just come down to just living your life in the way god wants you to live and hope that maybe with a little bit here and a little bit there, you start influencing that person based on what they see you doing. Yeah, I, I just, it, it, for me, it was like, 
I don't want to be around this person. You it can know, be tough. I was like, it can be tough. This oh, yeah. person is so selfish, like all the time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, I don't know, man. Like, I just, I don't know. And I guess that's what I'm, I guess, I don't know why I'm bringing it up. But <laughs> Holy Spirit knows. So I just, what would you, like, you, you answered some questions and what you would mm-hmm. do. But I just don't have the patience for that. I don't have the grace for that. And what would you do about that? If it gets to the point, and that's hard. And, you know, I don't know if this is coming from um, a spirit of wisdom or if this is just coming from what I think uh, based on my experiences. But because I've, I've, I, I can think of one person like that. I can. Um, and, yeah, it wasn't fun being around that person and eventually I just had to I mean if you know you're not going to get through if if you know there's nothing you I mean it's it's just a fight and it's and it's and it's it's a one-way battle Mm -hmm. and there's there's nothing live what you can when you are around that person you know you just just live by the spirit and then if you can just don't be around that person because you don't want that rubbing off on you. exactly yeah you don't want that um because you know one thing when i was uh i did uh i was a youth group leader for a little while and one thing i told some kids who started coming um who uh were coming from bad situations they had uh, not not good friendships and stuff like that, and they were starting to um, be interested in God and the Bible and the Holy Spirit, and you know would ask me questions. You know, I'd tell them, you know, I know it's going to be hard, but if you want to truly grow, I'm not saying you can't ever hang out with your old friends, but you need to make some new friends who are going to encourage you and push you in the right direction. Uh, I had. There's one guy I know who just, drama just seemed to follow him around everywhere he went. It just had this situation going on, this situation going on, this situation going on, and was just complaining about it and horrible life and all this. And I, and, you know, and I'm like, eventually he tried to move away. I think he moved to Al, some other state. I don't know. And because he, he couldn't handle it anymore. He, he, you know, he grew up, got out of high school, and he moved away. And uh, followed it on Facebook a little bit. And where he went, drama, drama, drama. And then he came back here. He's back here now. And drama, drama, drama. And it's just like, you know, I'm just, I'm just watching this like, you know, sometimes it's the people around you. You know, sometimes it's stuff you can't control, but you can control who you hang out with. And if you're going to keep hanging out with the same kind of people, the same kind of stuff is going to happen. And if you don't surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you, then you're just not going to be able to get over this. And it's just always going to be around you. Do you know what I've, you just brought up, what hit me, is people want to be around people who don't disagree with them. Mm-hmm. That's a sinful thing, I think. Yeah. Like, I want to be around someone who always takes my side, who always agrees with everything, and who shuts their mouth when, when I'm talking and da-da-da-da, agrees with everything that I am, right? And, and I don't want to be around someone who's going to correct me. I don't want to be around someone who's going to actually uh, show me what I'm doing is wrong, mm-hmm. or who's going to actually have an opinion. I don't want to be married to someone like that. I don't want to have friends like that. But mm-hmm. That's what I think is true friendship, is someone who's willing to stop you. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a true marriage is someone who's willing to say, "Hey, what are you doing?" You know, mm-hmm. and and I think that's what we're the beginning of our conversation started off with was this sense of free will. Yeah, right. Like we want to have relationships, but we don't want the other person to be an individual. We don't want the other person mm-hmm. to have an opinion that's against ours. Right, yeah. and I think that's the thing about Christianity for me, anyways, is is mm-hmm. this sense of. I'm not interviewing you so you can sit here and listen to me and you can just be over there being quiet and I can get all the attention and all the glory. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm listening to you because I like you. Right. I like who you are. I like to hear your insights. I like your, uh, when you, even when you disagree with me so I can be enlightened in some way, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And 
and you know taking it taking it to the extreme as far as beliefs you know that's one thing but just i mean everyday things you think about another reason god didn't want robots is he wanted diversity people who can think differently about different things and if you think about if we didn't have that you know you think of if everybody always enjoyed the same thing liked the same thing agreed on everything there would be no growth I mean, you think about, um, you know, how many, think about chefs and all the different kinds of food that are out there. Mm. And if everybody agreed on the same thing, we'd all be eating the same thing. (laughs) Right. If you think, you know, art and different things like that, different interests and hobbies, you know, um, everybody likes different things, enjoys different things. Mm. And honestly, that's how we learn about different things, Mm. because there's somebody who will love studying something like geology and will be able to get things out of that um, that I would never find out and then they can compress it shorten it explain it in such a way where someone who's not necessarily that deeply interested Mm -hmm. can find something enjoyable about that Mm -hmm. Um, and then be able to share those experiences those thoughts combine them together and get a bigger picture of everything that's going on around us Mm -hmm. rather than just stay into one narrow view. And I think that's the thing about um, a lot of people in the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I have to break myself out of that all the time. Constantly. I have to be uh, what Jesus describes. You must become like little children again and become curious again Mm -hmm. about others, difference of opinions, difference of way of doing things. You look at kids, mm-hmm. they're always like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. You know, and not in a sense of like, like, why would you do that? What I got over here is going on is way better than you. Cause I'm better than you, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's evil, but right. children are very, just like interested. They're so interested. Mm-hmm. They're so curious. And I think we need to get curious again, right. Mm-hmm. About each other, about learning and yeah, about, definitely. you know, and that's what this is hopefully supposed to do is to break down that that sinful nature is to break down that um selfishness is is to get people excited about people again Mm -hmm. you know it's like i don't have to agree with everything that you or anyone else does and i know i run across a lot of people who don't agree with how i live or what i think or whatever but that's the beauty of it Mm -hmm. you know definitely the beauty the beauty is i believe is our is our differences Mm -hmm. absolutely and, you know, and I think that's exactly how God feels. And right. that's, you know, why he did and made such diversity with what he did. You think about, so let's go back to the Tower of Babel. So, um, Old Testament, you still have everyone coming from one family. Family, Everybody spoke the same language. And, you know, this is after the, the flood of Noah. So you've got people concentrated into one small area. And that's not what God wanted. God said... Go across the earth, fill it up, spread out, you know, enjoy everything that I gave you. Right. And everybody was like, no, we want to (laughs) stay in this one little circle and do what we want to do. Right. And do it the way we want to do and all of this. (laughs) And um, so, you know, I think this is another misconception people get about the Tower of Babel. Anybody who reads the story of Because they were going to build this giant tower up to the heavens, you know. And people think, well, God was afraid of, you know, people doing too much on their own and not needing him, achieving some sort of God level whatever. And I really don't think that's what God was upset with. I think God was upset with, hey, you guys are not doing what I told you to do in spreading out and diversifying and all of this. Mm. So that's why he, in that moment, created, um, changed everybody's minds so that all of a sudden there were all these different languages, Mm. forcing them to kind of break off and move out and spread out and then go to these different areas. It brings up the idea of people are afraid of what they don't know Mm -hmm. and, and what they cannot control, Yeah. right? And I think about that, and I just thought about this as a revelation right now. I was like, that sounds like Battle Mountain, (laughs) building a tower of their way of life. And God is inviting people like me and people like you and interests, all these 
diversities mm -hmm. and and the battle mountain people are like cringing they're like no <laughs> I, I know you're born here yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but you still want diversity you mm -hmm. want the growth to happen yeah. yeah yeah you know i around battle mountain growing up we had white people we had some hispanics and we had native americans very, very rare were there blacks or Asians. Okay, very rare. Somehow, I found those people and I hung out with them. I don't, we had, there was a kid when I was in elementary, later elementary, before high school, uh, before junior high. And uh, it was an Asian, it was an Asian kid. I think they were the only Asian family in town. And he was close to my age and I ended up hanging out with him. Um... You know, the very few black families that have been in our town, there's been a couple I haven't known, but I've seen them, I've noticed them, and then um, in the recent years, it seems like I've known all of them that have been in this town. Because uh, you're you not know, racist. You guys, exactly. <laughs> you we know. don't hang out with the racist people, we hang out with the non-racist white people. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't know. When I was growing up, it wasn't about race. Not, not to me. People were people, you know, because there were, you know, the Hispanics had their cultures. You have the Basque people that have their culture. You have the Native Americans, you know, around here that have their culture. And that was fine. And everybody got to celebrate their culture and they got to do their own thing. And if I didn't want to take part in your culture, that's fine. If you want, you know, <laughs> whatever, it's cool. But you're still people. You didn't look down upon them. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it was people. We all lived together. We all had different um, ancestral backgrounds. But we all ended up in this place. And this is where we are. And then I left for the military, and I came back, and I started hearing about some racial tensions going on in this town, and I'm like, what is going on? And it was people coming from other areas, came here for the mining jobs, came here for the money, and they brought certain biases and things with them, and it created um, some tension, I know, in the schools at the time. Like I said, when I was uh, the youth group leader at the time, I'd hear about some, some of these tensions, and I was... I don't know. I just, I've, I was, I never thought that way. I was never brought up that way. And, and yet I had every potential to be that way coming from an area like this, but I don't know. It's just a testament to it's, you don't have to be that way. And there's no it's reason. It's a choice. It's a choice. Exactly. It's that's a choice. what, that's what we come back to again. Mm -hmm. And that's where like, when I grew up, I was growing, I grew up where, where, where people were like, cops are bad. Mm -hmm. because they tell on you <laughs> you know what i mean and then i believed that and i was always afraid of cops because of the things that i was told and how i was raised and how i was conditioned yeah. mm -hmm. and then i started to question it mm -hmm. and that was the thing for me i started to question it and i met a cop not here i met lots of cops before and i mm -hmm. knew people who wanted to be cops and i was like why would you want to be a cop you know yeah and they'll be oh because of this and that whatever you know and other people and i've seen cops do good things and i'm like wait a minute, this isn't, this isn't what I thought it was. I've been conditioned to think this way about cops. And I thought if I could been conditioned to think about this and been forced to think about this because of the media or because mm -hmm. of this, how much more am I conditioned to think other, other things, right? I had a friend who was like, you're God and, and you need to smoke more weed. <laughs> We're all gods. He's smoking weed. And I'm like, if I'm God, then why do I have to smoke weed to feel good about myself? Mm -hmm. If I'm God, why do I have to drink alcohol to make the depression go away mm -hmm. or the, the guilt or whatever? Right. And I started to question things. For me, I, I yeah. started to ask a lot of questions. And, and I started to, my eyes and my mind and my heart started to open up to the truth around mm -hmm. what I was perceiving. And there's a lot of speculation and assumptions about black people, white people, Hispanics, politics even religion jesus and that and people are just they're like listening to the gossips of the world instead of opening up a book <laughs> and reading it for themselves and seeing what does god actually say in the holy bible mm -hmm. right what does science actually say what are the proofs what are the evidences of these things right and then i started to realize how blind i was mm -hmm. about what i'm surrounded around who I'm surrounded around. I was just right. taking people's words for it. Mm, right? Yeah. People say, oh, this is a terrible person. Stay away from this person. Oh, they did this to me. Whatever. 
And I've been put on that side too. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, let me get to meet that person for myself. Mm -hmm. And I realized I really like that person. I think that you just had a bad experience or got off on the wrong foot with this person or aren't seeing the perspective clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's about, you know, you bring a good, good point. It's asking questions. It's people don't ask enough questions. And this comes from both sides. This comes from Christians. This comes from non-believers. This comes from, I mean, any, any side that you look at, I think there's a lot of people that just don't ask enough questions. There's a book that came out. It's an older book, actually. I want to say it was probably came out in the 80s, but it's um, Don't Check Your Brains at the Door. Don't check your brains at the Don't door. Don't check your brains at the door. And it's and it was it was written for teens and it was uh, under the concept that people think Christianity is blind faith. Right? If you believe in Christianity, then you're not thinking and you're not asking questions and you're not doing this. And it's just um, you know, you're an idiot because you're you're just taking everything on blind faith. And really true honest Christianity, I think you need to be asking questions. You need to be saying, hey, why is this this way? Be like a child. And stuff like that. And be and be like a child. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, we talked about the study we had this morning. That's answering those questions that should be asked. Because with, ever, with so much teaching about evolution and stuff like that going on in the world today, people have these questions. Well, if I'm being taught evolution is true... But Christianity doesn't believe that. Does that mean Christians are dumb? And no, it's not that at all. Mm -hmm. It's that, um, and some people follow it. Some people do follow it in blind faith. Um, but then there's a lot of people who were Christians who weren't exposed to these kind of answers who turned away because, well, it's not answering my questions mm -hmm. because they have questions. So I love studies like this where I can have the ability to have answers for those questions for people. And for myself, even. Mm -hmm. Because the more I study this, mm -hmm. the more I come to the conclusion, there has to be a God. Mm -hmm. There has to be a God that created all this. There's so many things that evolution, natural processes, just does because, not explain. Exactly. And I think, I think it comes back to 2 plus 2 doesn't equal whatever you want it to equal. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose that 2 plus 2 and a fundamental and a design that 2 plus 2 equals for for a specific purpose and a meaning mm -hmm. and it's like what does my life succumb to when i look at my past what is the purpose of life and i asked myself when i was lost and i was like what's the purpose of life mm -hmm. and then i find myself in a church and i find myself getting my answers mm -hmm. not not um answers from other different religions i used to be a buddhist not answers from other people's opinion or friend who was trying to get me into hinduism all this stuff it never answered what i it never f satisfied me in other words mm -hmm. with their with their answers it just had me asking more questions for me yeah. so but in christianity i finally started finding my answers to to things that i would perceive in the world and it mm -hmm. gave me more peace yeah. And more security and more, for me, it gave me more faith mm -hmm. to trust in the things that I don't see. But there, they, there are answers to everything. Mm -hmm. And I think, like you said, we need to ask more questions, yeah. you know, Absolutely. and just like, oh, this person's judging me because I feel like I'm having a bad day. But if you go ask the person, you're like, are you judging me? <laughs> you're like, I don't even know you. <laughs> You looked at me like this, and it's like, I wasn't even paying attention. I was daydreaming about this, you know? Yeah. And I think a lot of gossip mm -hmm. is a lot of assumptions being entertained that are not truth. They're just speculations. Yeah. It'd be ignorant for me to say and assume that you are a certain type of person mm -hmm. without asking you, who are you? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's assumptions. Those are deadly <laughs> <They're> because <deadly, yeah. laughs> just ruin so many things yeah it's ridiculous yeah so i want to i want to close up mm -hmm. and um i want you to close up and i've always wanted to do this if you don't feel comfortable you don't have to you can pray it could be short it could be long it could be okay whatever. yeah we can do that all right cool <sighs> heavenly father lord Rios, thank you so much for this time for this ability to just um come before you and have these chats and, and talk and 
we just pray, Lord, that if there's somebody that needs to hear this stuff, Lord, that you would allow them to hear it. And um, just thank you for open conversation, for open discussion, Lord. And just pray that uh, that kind of spirit, that kind of openness would just uh, build its way through this community, Lord, and anybody who watches it. Um, Lord, that uh, you would just do with this whatever you have a purpose to do. Lord, I, I thank you so much for what Jeremy is doing. I just uh, pray, Lord, that as he continues his project, that you will just bless that, bless him, and just reach people, Lord, with truth. And Lord, help them to ask the questions. Help them to, to seek truth and just really um, explore, Lord, all the things on their mind. And figure these things out to not just take it in blind faith but to really research it and ask those deep questions lord amen. i thank you and praise you and ask this in jesus name amen that was a really good prayer you need to pray more <laughs> <laughs> i know you pray on your yeah. own but you need to yeah. pray like group wise right i think you'd be gifted <laughs> okay. with that <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we never know when we're gifted in. That's the okay. thing. Right. Someone yeah. else has to call it out. Ah, so. Usually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was really good. I, I uh -huh. wanted to do another one. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just so good today and the one we did before, but mm -hmm. I want people to see and, yeah. and whatnot. And, Absolutely. Man, I had it, but let's just leave it at that. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>